What up, guys, and welcome to The Coffee Shop. This is your host, The Baristo, and I'm going to show you a quick little video, hopefully quick, right? Just like a little five-minute thing. Let's push for that. Um, it is a five-minute video, hopefully, of how to use the stochastic and the RSI in combination with each other. A lot of people are getting this wrong, and I don't understand what the problem is. That's why I've done videos uh, that are telling you uh, basically that the RSI has only two sides and the stochastic only has two entry sides, right? Now, they're kind of upside down from each other, but the leading indication should be your RSI. So let me just kind of point out a few things, right? We're going to start with the indicators. I'm going to go to uh, the settings first and tell you what you should be set for. Uh, I'm looking at a five minute chart, but these same settings would basically work on the, you know, on a one hour and less, whatever you like, right? So most people are using the RSI, put one on your chart, relative strength index. Okay. Um, for those who want this one, just kind of, you know, comment below. And um, this is going to be a very special one that I'll be releasing on a later date. Okay. This is, this one's like super killer. Okay. So uh, you're going to go into your RSI. Um, let me just not mess you guys up here. Relative strength. There we go. Re I don't know what that is. That's relative strength minus 50. Okay. Relative strength index. Okay. So uh, let me just kind of make this one disappear. All right. Now the, the RSI has a midline. Let's get rid of the moving average. We don't necessarily need that. Uh, we're going to get rid of this and let's make this yellow, you know, cause it's easier to see. There we go. Now the relative strength index has a midline where you're using 50, uh, where's the midline? There we go. Uh, we're using 50 in this case as the, uh, indication that you are either bullish or bearish. And that midline is right here. Okay. So anything that takes place above the midline. Okay. Uh, put the background on. There we go. So anything that takes place above the midline, you should be looking for buys, right? And anything that takes place below the midline, you should be looking for sells. Now, that's very easy to follow. That means you simply want to know, is your RSI above zero or is it below zero, right? Above the midline or below the mid, above or below the midline, right? And along with that, you want to know where is your stochastic. So uh, you can put a stochastic on your chart, or in this case, you can use the S-T-O-C-A-S-H-I, right? This is the Cashy plus Caffeine Crush. This is a nice one that I created. Okay. Add that to your chart, Stakashi plus Caffeine Crush. Uh, link for it will be below in the description. There you go. So if your RSI is set for the common default 14, what you want to do is you want to go to the... Uh, inputs, right? The inputs of the stochastic, right? You want the K, the D and the RSI length and the stochastic length. What you want to do is you want to set this for half of your RSI. Okay. Your RSI doesn't have to be 14. It can be set for whatever you like. Okay. But whatever it is, the stochastic K has to be half of the RSI and the D should be as high as half of the K. So I could set this to four, but that's going to be too much. Three is okay because two times three is still less than seven, right? So, and the reason for that is because of the smoothing. You see your candles end up just end up with long wicks and you don't get any rear, real clear indication of, you know, what's happening there. So that's the reason for that, right? So the other reason you're setting this at 14, you don't have to. The reason that this is 14 and this is for half of that is because this moves and is more sensitive to price action than this is. I simply want to know if over the last 14 candles, am I bullish or am I bearish? And then while I am either bullish or bearish, is momentum giving me sells or buys? Okay. Now, buys obviously take place. Let's put this here. Buys obviously take place when you are near the bottom, okay? And sells take place when you're near the top. But this is where people get this wrong. You don't sell on every high and you don't buy on every low. There's a reason for this. You only take a buy. Here's the strategy. You only take a buy when the RSI is above zero, okay? And the stochastic is moving upwards, right? So... You end up getting a buy signal here, right? See, it's crossing above zero. And the stochastic is already on its way up, okay? 
And so give you an example of where that doesn't work, right? Uh, here you go. Right down here. You get a buy signal here, okay? You get a buy signal here. However, the RSI is way down here. It's all the way down here. That is not a buy signal, okay? Even though price action does move up a little bit, this is a retracement that's taking place, but you don't wanna use this as a buy signal, okay? The RSI needs to be crossing above, needs to be crossing above. And the stochastic needs to not be at the top. You see how it's at the top at the same time this is here? You want it to be curving up. Look what's happening here. Now it's curving up, right? And the RSI is already at its strongest point, okay? The RSI doesn't have to be crossing zero. This is where there is the least amount of strength, bullish and bearish. As the RSI rises closer and closer to its extreme, that's when you have more and more strength in that move. So if you get this little swoop and curve up and the RSI is at some super high level, that's when you want to be taking a nice long long move okay so that's your that's your indication of when you should be taking longs or shorts right the rsi simply has to be somewhere above zero the further from zero the better right the further along the, uh, uh, away from the middle the better and the stochastic needs to be curving upwards and it's just a reverse for cells right so you get this curve down over here but the rsi look is where is it it's above zero so you don't want to take this short even though price action does pull down a little bit, what you're looking at is a pullback, okay? You still have an uptrend taking place here. What you're looking at is an uptrend, and this is the beginning of a pullback because the stochastic starts pulling down, right? The momentum starts retracing to the buy side while the RSI is on the buy side i'm sorry yeah it's retracing to the buy side while the rsi is on the buy side so it's setting up for another long move that's what's happening so as the rsi crosses below into the bearish area and then crosses back into the bullish area what is your stochastic doing now it's one more candle right it's not curving up yet i don't want to take this i would take it when this green candle prints right i'd be doing that when this green candle prints it's because this green candle is larger than the previous. So I've actually broken away from support and resistance, and I'm actually moving to a longer move, right? A, a better move. I'm gaining momentum. The RSI is now further away from the center. So this candle would be my entry, okay? And you can always use the RSI formula to figure out, like, how far is the move going to go? Uh, we can do this, right? Let's just, let's just take a shot in the dark with this one. Here's the low for that move. Uh, the RSI value is, um, let's see, that's 1 to 2.43. 1 to 2.43 is where that's going to go. 2.43. It's going to draw this out. And if you look, you end up getting a decent kind of, right, support and resistance level. So it's going to move this far, but it meets resistance here. So let's kind of draw a box around that. Here's the height. Here's the resistance that it met. And let's do this. Extend to the right. And what do you have in front of you? You now have a drawn out support and resistance area. And you can see how reactive price is to this very nicely. So it's a very cool thing to do. Um, and it, this is not a setup for you to learn how to do support and resistance. This is simply when do you take your longs? When do you take your shorts? And let me refresh that, okay? You take your longs when your stochastic is curving upwards, right? But the RSI has to be on the bullish side. Now, there's only one part to this that I did not tell you about. I'm giving you from the bottom up here, okay? Our size giving you bullish or bearish strength, okay? The stochastic is telling you you are either, okay, your bullish strength, you want to be setting up for a bullish move, right? Or you are bearish strength, you want to be setting up for a bearish move, right? That's what's happening here. Start getting a downtrend right there. So <clears throat> the only thing I didn't tell you about is you need to watch for where support and resistance is on your chart. Otherwise, this does not work. Okay. So in this area here, you can see that for some reason, there was a bunch of sell-off taking place. Let's see, it made it to this point. And we had sell-off taking place there, right? So let's kind of get rid of this. And this is going to be the reason why 
a sell signal or a, 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 a sell signal or a buy signal does not work because you're already moving into support and resistance. You have to draw this out, okay? I'm simply drawing on the wick over here. This isn't true support and resistance. This is really just kind of subjective, right? Um, let's go right here. Now, you can see that this sell signal prints, okay? The sell signal prints, the RSI is not at the low, okay? It just barely enters into the low at this point. It's just, just below zero here, right? And I'm moving into a sell position, right? You can see that with the, with the uh, uh, movement of the stochastic. The stochastic is on the sell position. The RSI just barely crossed over into the minus side or below zero. It's actually um, 49.8, right? It's 49 here, but this level is a 50 level. So if the RSI is below zero and this is moving into a sell side, remember I said, this is the weakest area of buy and sell strength. But if you have support and resistance drawn out, you would see that at the close of this candle, you are too close to your support or resistance zone. You do not want to be trading this close to it. You want to be further away from it trading towards it, right? You want to be trading towards support and resistance, or better yet, you want to trade off of it. So let's take a look at a trade that takes place off of it, right? So you end up getting what? Let's see here. Uh, I had support and resistance drawn out appropriately before. And let's see. So we got, uh, we'll go to this high here, right there. And this ends up being valid right there. Now, you end up getting a, right? This starts moving up. You start getting a buy signal here. Your RSI is, right? Your RSI is on the bullish side right there. Okay, good. You get a small move up, but where is your resistance? It's right there. Okay, it's right there. So right there is your resistance. You can only go that far. So move starts here and it ends there, right? So you want to watch closely for where support and resistance is. You really have to take care of that. Now, you get another sell signal. Uh, here's a perfect example. You break below support and resistance. Momentum starts carrying down while the RSI is on a strong bearish side. Okay, so I um, hope that kind of clears up some of the question that some people had. This is based on a Reddit question that somebody asked me. They keep using the RSI and the stochastic together, but they keep getting into the trades the wrong way. Uh, and several times they end up with this, right? They end up taking a sell, right? While the RSI is below, they take a sell, but for some reason, price just kind of gets stuck. They, th th this is where they get stuck. And then they get out of their trade and price moves along the direction that they wanted to anyway. So they were right to understand that this is the sell side, the bearish formation of momentum, right? And they were simply entering at the wrong place. That's all they were doing. They were entering at the wrong place. You see, this is the, this is the weakest part, right? This is the weakest part of movement. You want to enter when, you know, you got it way down here or way up here. Okay. Another video, I'm going to show you how to catch, um, what is that? Continuation trades using the stochastic and the RSI, or in this case, hidden divergences. So yeah, that's coming up soon. Peace out, everybody.